level 8, key stage 3, exam type questions. The table shows data about births in the United Kingdom. So in 1910, this many births. 1960, these many births. Question starts by saying part A, in which year was the number of births the greatest, the highest? Now all these numbers are in standard form. But you can't compare numbers in standard form if the power, or indice as this is called, power indice, are not all the same. At a quick glance it looks like these two are in fact the smallest years. But until we make these indices the same, we can't compare them. So I need to re rewrite these first two numbers as 10 to the power of 5. Now in doing that, I've made that 1 power of 10 smaller. I've made it 10 times smaller, so I'll have to make that 10 times bigger. 1 power of 10 bigger. I'm going to make that 10 to the power of 5 also. I've made it 1 power of 10 smaller. So I'll have to make the same adjustment there. Now we can compare these numbers with these numbers. And looking at the first part, 11.3 is the largest. So in fact, this is the highest population in 1920. So 1920 is the answer. How many more births were there in 1990 than in 1980? How many more births in 1990 than in 1980? Now, again, you can only compare numbers if they have got 10 to the same power. Now, because these have, and everything is fine, we can just subtract the 7.54 away from 7.99 and get 0 0.45 times 10 to the power of 5. So the difference between these two numbers is this number. So this is almost the answer. Now the reason it's not quite the answer is because it does say and give your answer in standard form. To be in standard form, this part must be between 1 and 10, so we need to adjust it to 4.5. Now, because we made that 10 times bigger, a power of 10 bigger, we'll have to make that a power of 10 smaller, so the 5 needs to change into a 4. So there's our answer. We're given the information that 48 equals 3 multiplied by 2 to the power p and 56 equals 7 multiplied by 2 to the power q and we've got to find the values of p and q. Well 48 is definitely 3 sixteenths and 16 let's look at that 2 times 2 is 4 times another 2 is 8, times another 2 is 16, so this is in fact 16. So we can say 3 times 2 to the power of 4 is in fact 48. So I deduce that P is of value 4. Now let's look at 56. 56 equals 7 multiplied by 8. And 8 is 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8. Therefore, we've got 2 to the power of 3. So I deduce that the Q is in fact a 3. Part B. 48 multiplied by 56 is 3 times 7 times 2 to the power of... Well, we've got to find out what that is. So we've got 48 multiplied by 56. There's 48 there's 56, there's 48, there's 56, so let's write down 
we rearrange this, we can have 3 times 7 times 2 to the power 4 times 2 to the power 3. And when we multiply, we add indices together. So this becomes 3 times 7 times 2 to the power of 7. So the answer to the question is, R has a value of 7. Match each graph to the correct equation. So we're actually given the equation. There are five of them. And one of them is A, one of them is B, and so on. And we've got to deduce which is which. So let's have a little look at these graphs. Now this is the only graph which is a parabola. So this is in fact a quadratic. So it's Y equals X squared something, 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 something. This is a straight line, and so is this. So we need to think about those two. This shape is a cubic shape. We recognise that as a cubic. So that's y equals x cubed, and possibly a number and possibly something else. This is what we call a reciprocal. So that's y equals some number or other over x. So let's see if we can use the, what we've figured out so far. Let's go for the parabola to start with, a, well there's our x squared one, so that's a. Now, this was our reciprocal graph, so that's e, and that's this one here. It's 1 over 6x, so that's ok. Our cubic, well this is our cubic one, so that's c. So we've just got to figure out these two. Now the point about these two is that this has a positive gradient and this has a negative gradient. That might help us out. Let's see if that does it. This says plus 2x and this says minus 1x. So this one's got a negative gradient. So this is the one with the negative gradient which was b. So therefore this one must be d. You could look at that another way. This says passing through the y-axis at minus 6. Whereas this one doesn't pass through the y-axis at minus anything. So that could be another way of deciding which way those straight lines go. There's always more than one way of doing a question. So there'll be other ways of doing that one.